going to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is very special. Going to come up to the stage now. He is a survivor of the original Nakba of 1948. Halal Munning Masud. He's of the Al Asma family. He's from Nablus originally. Halal was born in 1944. That's right, he was born four years before the Nakba, four years before the current state of Israel ever existed. We're always told this is an age-old, complicated conflict. Bullshit! It's a conflict less than some of our lifetimes. And Halal is living proof that we can outlive and outlast and resist the Israeli occupation. He was born one of nine children, all survivors of the Nakba in 1948, before leaving for Jordan, and he's been fighting for a free Palestine ever since. Thank you, Halal. First, Ramadan Kareem, and it's great and lovely and happy to talk to all of you. But before I talk, I'd like you to close your eyes for a few seconds and think of the most loved person to you in your heart, your mind, and think they were in Gaza and say, how do you feel about it? Just a few seconds. Okay, you know, we, I begin to acknowledge the traditional custodian of this land that we are gathered on today. I pay my respect to their elders, past and present, and extend the respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people here with us. Okay. Today, we gather on Gadget Girl land and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. We live on a lost land, and Palestine is a lost land. First, my name is Hilal. I've been introduced. My father's name is Munir Mahmoud Ahmed Masoud. We can go seven generations back. I was born in Nablus in 1944. Okay. Yeah. And my, my mother was born in Bisan, it is north of Palestine, near the lake of Tabaria. Uh, Palestine is a stolen land, no doubt about it, all of you know that. And I hope to highlight a few things about what it feels and how it is to be a Palestinian in this world. You know. It is, uh, when I was four years old, you have memories, all of you. My memories of when I was four years old, standing against the wall in my house in Nablus, standing like this with the family, members of the family, while the British and the Israelis were bombing Nablus and other cities in Palestine. So I opened my eyes with the sound of music, you know, the sound of bombs sounds of aggression, sounds of colonization. When I was, <clears throat> I remember, you know, a lot of things in my part, but we don't have time to talk about it now. But the, over 76 years ago, my father was in demonstration like this one, and we in the street, and the British colonizers and the Israelis start to shoot at the demonstrators. My father was shot in his knee, and he spent all his life limping and walking like this, couldn't bend. And I was helping him, you know, to wear his trousers, shoes, etc. Okay. So uh, it is, it is very, very hard, you know, memories. But not all of us have beautiful memories, like you know. Also, in my permanent memory, also, uh, and. It, it is the family, the fear we had when we were in Nablus and what to do. Should we leave or should we stay? It, it is emotions really hurt you and very hard for everyone. Uh, I will not talk about my childhood for a long time, but when I finish university, I'm just telling you about to be a Palestinian, what it feels. When I wanted to finished university and I wanted to be a chartered accountant. 
I said, no, you are Palestinian. It's very difficult, you know, for Palestinians or anybody, except British and Singaporeans are, they can, can charter the accountants, okay? So I said, no, you're completely wrong. You know, I come from a nation which believe in resistance. We have a brain like yours, and we can survive like yours. And I went to London, and I did my chartered accountancy in, in the exact period without failure. Also, I'm a holder of Australian passport. But I don't know if you know that if you are a Palestinian and hold an Australian passport, you're not allowed to write as a country of birth, Palestine. This is my birth certificate. It says I'm Palestinian. It is in English, Arabic, and Hebrew. And it mentioned I am Palestinian. But this government here, they refuse. The option you have when you write is Israeli or Jordan, but not. In the, in the old days, they used to allow occupied territory, but not anymore. Okay, that, that applies to all documentations you have. You, know, you have to choose to be Israeli because you were born in Nablus, okay, which is not really, strictly speaking, but not supposed to be occupied. <laughs> anyway, yes, more than 80 years of resistance. We continue until Palestine is free, you know, no way. Don't forget, don't forget, you know, Australia act like this because Australia is still a colony of Great Britain. Okay? And they follow the orders from Great Britain, and Great Britain follows the order from USA. Don't kid yourself. This is the way it is. But the great thing about now, it is we have young people, we have a lot of people who read and knowledge that this nonsense, you know. We, we, we should, we are all human beings, you know. It doesn't matter. Palestinian, Australian, British, Aboriginal, we are all human beings. And this is the way we should, we should be treated everywhere. My granddaughter, she's nine years old now. She will grow up in, she, she knows about Palestine. Every family in Palestine, they, they teach their children to be aware of their heritage and their situation. Our resistance comes in three ways, you know. First way you resist physically, as it's happening in Gaza and West Bank, okay? Or we resist, like this gathering, and talking, speaking, and telling people about the injustice we have. Or keep it in your heart and feel sad for this bloody world, which doesn't feel for you and your problems. Okay. So th this is the fact about every, every emotional or every political situation we have in this world. Some people act and do something, and some people just keep silent and they are frightened to do anything about it. You're great people here, you're doing the right thing. So, we, we, need, we need ceasefire, we need humanity, we need to stop the slaughter in, in Gaza and in the West Bank also. And we should, here in this country, should stop treating Palestinians as we are aliens. You know, we have Australian passport. We participated in development of this country. We worked hard. We pay tax. So we should be respected and called Palestinians. <laughs> That's how it should be. Okay. The Aboriginal the lost a lot. We lost a lot, okay? Our prime minister is not originally from this country, okay? But he can put the name of his country of birth or country where he come from in his passport. We don't, we're not allowed. It's a blank. And that's shame, really. So I want to finish the, 
Thank you very much for your support. And this is the way things are going to change and changing everywhere in the world. The truth always wins. The truth always comes. And God will bless all of you. And we will keep the fight. We keep the resistance. And our children will do the same if injustice stays the same. You know? That's the way it is everywhere. Thank you very much. And I tell you, it is great to be Palestinian. It's great to be with you guys. Thank you.